we're going to talk about neurobiology of anxiety. We've already laid the groundwork for this before by looking at uh, normal fight or flight responses, but we're going to dig a little deeper here. Uh, here we have a cartoon, free floating anxiety magnified 200 trillion times. So that's what it looks like up close. And uh, what I want to do before we uh, jump into the material is I want to play for you uh, a video. It's about a minute and a half long, and uh, this is really quite good in terms of the symptoms that you see displayed, and we're going to come back and refer to this uh, during the early part of this class. So let me see here. You should have a, a blue screen, is that correct? Is that it? Everybody see the blue screen? Yes. See play? Sixteen, is that the Hawkins Agency? Yeah. Oh, that's a good company. I have a friend who works there. Have you been up to their offices before? Oh, of course not. The agency is not. Why don't you bring them down to our place and show them the great job he did? Anyway, I'm sure you're going to do it really well. You remember Steve, my boss? Of course you do. Well, he talks about you all the time. It's just amazing what you do. And are you okay? Oh, I'm sorry. What? Are you okay? You don't look too well. I don't know. Something's wrong. I have to get off this elevator. I have to get off. I have to get off right now. Okay. God. Oh, my God. I'm dying. Linda? Linda, just sit here, okay? I'm going to go get some help. Okay. Now, uh, obviously, that is a panic attack. And, uh, uh, again, it's, uh, let me get this up here. Placement PC. Okay. And again, I, I want to show you that. Uh, maybe one reason is to wake everybody up, but the other reason is because there are specific symptoms I want to talk about here shortly. Uh, so let's dive into anxiety. All right, here we go. Now, we've looked at, at this uh, diagram before, right? And so you might want to get that out. I'm just going to review this, and I'm, I'm going to do this in a... a sort of sh short version of this, but just to remind everybody, okay, in normal fight or flight responses, get my arrow up here, let's say there's a real threat in the environment, and remember that is processed, you have parallel processing that occurs to the level of cortex and the level of the amygdala, all right? Then, what's going to happen then is if there's danger, then each one of these brain structures will use their own nerve cells, their own neurotransmitter uh, to activate the locus ceruleus. We're going to look at that in detail in just a minute. Also, they both activate the hypothalamus, and there are two main outflows from the hypothalamus that mobilize the body. One is a sympathetic nervous system, uh, lightning fast, nerve impulses at 250 miles an hour, uh, going everywhere in the body, and then also uh, down into the core of the adrenal gland, adrenal medulla, which dumps adrenaline and norepinephrine into the bloodstream. So that's the rapid response. And then the other are referred to as neuroendocrine pathways, uh, the brain uh, influencing uh, glands. Okay, so we have the HPA axis that we've talked about. Uh, and in humans, the main glucocorticoid is cortisol. And then we also have the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis. And so that's kind of it in a nutshell. We're going to get to a little bit more detail. 